thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And uh, I, I understand that it would be difficult to see me on this side of the house right now. I like it. So I'm really proud to be able to stand up and provide an opposition perspective on this particular bill. I think Bill 9 is an important bill. I think Bill 9 is a necessary bill. And if anything, I would, I would urge the government to go even further with this bill. So this bill establishes a bubble zone, a safety zone of 50 meters around um, the establishments that do provide abortion clinics and other reproductive health services to women. So there are two right now in Alberta. We have one in Edmonton, um, women, Women's Health Options. And we also have the Kensington Clinic in Calgary. And as the member from Calgary Bow was talking about, I also participated in the tour of that clinic and it was very concerning to me that people think that it's okay to try and prevent women from accessing legal health care. Um, I can't imagine any other circumstance where people would think it was okay to protest somebody seeking health care. If I was going to go for a bypass I don't think anyone would, or anyone was going for a bypass. I don't think anyone would think it was okay to have protesters outside of the hospital saying, no, I'm sorry, you can't have a bypass today. Think about what you're doing. Um, uh, the bill also uh, has provisions in it that, that um, prevent uh, essentially institutionalized um, protests against abortion, which I think is really important. This goes further than other bills, and I think, I think that that's a really smart move on the part of the government. Things that I would like to see um, enhanced, and I know it's not directly in this bill, but um, it, on, not all women in Alberta have equal access to reproductive health care. Not all women in Alberta have um, equal access to abortion services. I know that some of that has been um, improved with the introduction of the very difficult to pronounce medications that do help with this uh, procedure. But it is honestly my sincere hope that at some time in the future, Every woman in Alberta who requires an abortion has the access unfettered, um, un, unbullied, unintimidated access to be able to seek an abortion. I also want to talk very briefly about the medical professionals who provide these services to women. These are people who are dedicated and incredibly caring. They care about women's health, they care about women's well-being, and they have respect for women, and that's why they provide the services that they do. I know uh, there are jobs that some people do, like firefighters or paramedics, where they understand that there are inherent risks to their lives in, um, in providing those services to our communities, but I don't think that doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals who are providing healthcare, legal healthcare to women, should be afraid to go to work. They shouldn't be intimidated. They shouldn't be discouraged from providing legal healthcare to women. Uh, somebody earlier had talked about having deeply held personal beliefs that prevent them from taking certain actions. And while I have a great deal of respect for people's deeply held beliefs, nobody's ever been compelled to have an abortion, to my knowledge, in Alberta. I'm, there may be some cases outside of the auspices of this particular legislation, but this is a healthcare procedure that women seek because for whatever reason, they find it necessary. And, and I have had an abortion when I was a younger person. And what I did was I went and I talked to my doctor. And those are the only two people that should be involved in this conversation, regardless of what anyone else's beliefs are. I think at the root of the protest against women uh, seeking abortion services is a mistrust of women. Uh, I think that people don't believe that women are smart enough or um, 
empowered enough or deserving of being able to make decisions about their health care by themselves with their doctor. It's no one else's business. And for these reasons, I am very happy to support this bill. Here, here. Any questions or comments understanding Order 29-2A, the Honourable Minister of Health. Uh, thank you very uh, much, Madam Speaker, and uh, to uh, the member for her uh, comments. Uh, uh, there were a few uh, things that were said by a previous speaker that, um, that I want to set the record straight on and take this opportunity, and feel free to elaborate, uh, Honourable Member, in the time remaining. Uh, number one, this is not the same as the current injunctions that are in place. It's not the same for a few reasons. Uh, number one, the current injunctions don't apply to public property like streets. They don't apply to the roads. Uh, they don't apply to the sidewalks. And I've had uh, women uh, tell me that somebody will stand on the sidewalk, because the injunction doesn't apply to the sidewalk, right up against their car door so they can't open their car door. Or stand on the sidewalk blocking the access so that women going to their doctor's appointments feel that they have to go through the mud puddle in the, in the grass to get to their doctor's appointments. These are the kinds of changes that uh, this legislation to the physical space will change. It'll also be 50 meters, which is uh, a greater space uh, of protection than the injunctions. But the main thing that they said is that uh, an injunction without any enforcement mechanism, without any teeth, isn't worth the paper it's written on. So by actually giving um, some tools to law enforcement to actually be able to enforce the rules that are in place, rather than going saying, please move on. Uh, somebody may or may not move on, but there's nothing to compel them from respecting that direction from the officer in future days. So I do want to say to uh, the previous speaker that, uh, that what was said uh, doesn't reflect reality. I also uh, certainly welcome the honorable member to uh, respond to that. The one other thing I wanted to mention is that um, uh, aggression is something that was mentioned by the um, by the women who've uh, approached me saying that they'll be with their spouse going to get this procedure done. Their spouse feels really awful for them and is there to support them. And then they're called, uh, you know, a murderer or a killer or, you know, it's not too late to change your mind. And that it actually creates greater aggression between the spouse who's there to support their loved one and uh, the people who are on the streets uh, yelling these things. So uh, your remarks with regard to both those factors would be appreciated. Thank you. Honourable Member. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, injunctions, I, I agree, they aren't effective, they aren't doing the job. We've seen uh, protesters escalate their behavior. They are finding the boundaries of the injunction and they're taking advantage of that. And it is in incumbent on a government to protect everybody. Um, people who disagree with, with abortion procedures are certainly welcome to make their voice known in other ways, but to interfere with somebody who is seeking a legal health care procedure um, or advice even is, is unconscionable and for those reasons that's why injunctions are, aren't enough. And I think aggression uh, towards women, uh, regardless of how that's expressed during uh, protesting against women who are seeking abortions is at the root of, of why people go out. It, it is a disdain for women, it is a disrespect for women that seems to motivate these, uh, these kinds of actions. I can totally understand somebody not agreeing personally with um, uh, seeking an abortion and I would say please don't ever seek an abortion, don't do that. And I don't think anybody would ever compel them to. But our country has decided that this is a legal procedure and that women are able to make these decisions on their own, of their own accord. And for these reasons, um, yeah, aggression should not play into them seeking that kind of a procedure. Any other questions or comments?